well, we're asking uh, dumb uh, SEO questions. Uh, each week we meet to uh, answer the questions asked on the uh, SEO questions community on Google+. Plus. Um, with us tonight we have Archie Watt. Uh, Archie is a network engineer. Um, he resides uh, in Wales, uh, in the frozen wastelands of England. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Negraha is the world's greatest programmer and the world's greatest SEO copywriter. We have a few world's greatest here tonight. The world's greatest SEO copywriter, David Rosam, has 30 years experience in uh, copywriting and 10 of those as an SEO. Um, Tim Capper is a conversion rate optimization specialist. Uh, he is... Um, a um, proud to call himself an SEO. He runs a website in the US, in the UK, I should say. Um, it's called onlineownership.com. Okay, the um, first question that we're, we're dealing with tonight, uh, if you just bear with me, I'll just share my desktop if I can find the right button to click. Uh, This is driving me nuts. Excuse me a moment. There we are. Okay. Um, this is um, a relatively simple question. It's from uh, SEO SMO. Um, why is my site not in indexed by Google after a month? Well, without without actually seeing the site, it, did he, he didn't post his URL, did he? Or she? No, I, I actually looked for it. I don't think he had one in his profile either. No. Um, well, I, I think the community answers are just about all all that uh, can be said there. I mean, certainly start with a, a site query to see if it actually is indexed. After a month, if it's not indexed, I would imagine there's probably something. Uh, causing trouble, so check things like robots of TXT, meta no index tags, and uh, use the fetches Google function in webmaster tools to make sure Google is actually able to see the site. And you can also submit it to be indexed from there. Yeah. Anybody else? Thank you, Archie. Yeah, I should mention also the um, um, answers on the um, um, SEO questions community. Uh, one from uh, UniPro uh, uh, Education, a digital marketing agency, said uh, yes, it, it takes some time. Um, ProMoz SEO uh, wrote a good list, um, and um, thank you for that, uh, ProMoz SEO. And there was one other just about to come into view now, Gregory Kristen. Uh, um, also came um, good with an answer. I have to thank the, the, the people um, on our uh, community for the great job that they do uh, every week. All right, uh, our next is from um, Valentina Huff. She has uh, 2,000 plus links coming from google.com. Uh, Valentina says, uh, I was looking at our client's webmaster tools and saw that under links to your site, they had 2,000 plus links coming from google.com. I've never seen that before. Has anyone else? I have to say we've seen it because we've got 2,336, uh, no, 2,036, I'm sorry, um, going to uh, dumbseoquestions.com. Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's all your interaction on Google Plus, basically. Um, so whenever you post something, uh, if you've posted a link from your site into there, you've you know all your Google Plus posts are indexable, and it creates a link. They are no follow, obviously, but it creates a link back to your site. Um, and you know, it's it, 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 it's 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 there's nothing wrong with it. It's great. You know, it's good. It, uh, yeah. The more you post, it's going to increase even further. Yeah, I just wonder what the value of a um, 
of a um, no follow link is there? Eh? Anyway, well the, th the thing is, if you if you're posting things, you know, it's it. <coughs> I think I don't think it's going to it's like you know work as a reg regular links, but I think if you look at it for the future down the line, when you're posting stuff on your Google Plus page, which is obviously links to, to your site, um, and you're posting, you know, all relevant business kind of stuff um, around that whole sort of, you know, uh, area of what you do, ultimately over time, it's, uh, it's just going to be a good signal for Google to know exactly um, what you're doing uh, in terms of your business, uh, your posts are indexable, it can read them. Um, so it, it's just a really great way of um, of them understanding your site, what you're posting, what you you know what you're about as a business, etc. Um, so no, no, I think I think it's going to prove valuable in the long term. Um, you know whether it's noisy or not it's still you know that's up to Google to figure out but I, I think you know in, in the long term it's going to be um, you know some some good signals for for your your site um, as well as you know your your your, your Google Plus presence yeah I see um, Greg Gregory Christian agrees with you Tim too uh, um, answering a question on, on, on the SEO questions community on Google Plus and also uh, another good answer from uh, Rotimi Oren Malloy. Uh, anybody else on this one? Okay. We're ripping through these. Um, we have one from Brian Lichtig. Um, what is the best and easiest way to create backlinks for your website? Oi, oi, oi. Easy. <laughs> well, nothing's really easy because what you're doing to trying to create links is basically someone vouching for your site as such. Someone seeing something on your site that is so relevant and, and so unique that they actually referencing your site as an example from 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 their site um, so there is no easy way it's about building engagement it's about building trust it's about pre creating stuff that people want to share um, so th there isn't an easy way but if you wanted an easy link that's relevant um, your business should be involved in the local chamber of commerce um, and by joining that uh, or by joining a, a local business community you should be getting a link back from them so that there, there's one easy one but apart from that I wouldn't say they're actually easy um, you need to earn them Yeah, I see Promos SEO uh, um, gave a classic answer on, on the community. He said, uh, easy things are not generally good. Anybody else? Right, moving right along. Um, next question uh, is from oh, Girish Kapoor. Um, I titled it, Is My Site Hacked? Um, he said, uh, hello guys, please help me. I, I have faced one problem for my client's website. Um, when I checked the cache, um, cache www.oasispalmdubai.com uh, um, of my client's website, that it's showing some third-party URL in the header. And also, when I type the client's website's URL into Google, then it's showing a third-party URL in the description section. I have, um, oh, 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 damn it, I've clicked the wrong button and, and dropped that question. Could somebody uh, 
help me with the, with the rest of Girish's question, uh, please. I was going so well yeah. too. So he's um, so he's checked his cash um, on on this uh, website and. Um, it's showing a third-party URL in the actual header. Um, also, when he types in the client's website URL in Google, then it's showing third-party URL in the description section. So he's checked his database files and header files, um, but he doesn't have uh, a clue, and um, so he's he's asking for some help. I'm just I'm just having a look at the site now. It looks like. Um there's some cloaking happening. So if, if Googlebot, if I use a fake Googlebot user agent, I can, <coughs> I can see the um, the third-party URLs he mentioned. So um, uh, it's probably likely there's something in his HD access file that's um, causing his server to return different content to Googlebot. So um, I would start there to see if there's uh, anything causing that, and then. Um, you know, make sure you're securing your website, make sure WordPress is up to date, make sure you've got good passwords and everything. Um, and what I would usually do if if a WordPress site is hacked, I would also do a clean install of, the, of, of WordPress just in case there's anything else that's been compromised. But um, yeah, this looks like a case of cloaking and um, HD access would be the first place I'd start. Thank you, Archie. Anybody else? From memory, um, I think uh, it was Tony Anikchik, um that um, felt um, in, in the community answers. Um, I th well, I'm pretty sure he's got an, uh, an answer there. Girish was in denial for a little, little way through the comment thread, but uh, Tony um, um, gave him the bad news in, 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 in one sentence. All right, um, moving on from there, um, and I hope um, you get your site um, ship shape soon, uh, Girish. Um, Anna Clark asks, or, 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 or laments, that, um, oh, wait a minute, Girish is talking to me. What's it? Just one moment. Um, oh, okay, I can get, I can get, that, get to that in a second. Um, all right. Um, uh, Anna laments that people are not clicking through uh, to um, our website. Girish would like a link to the um, joint to join the Hangout guys. If one of you could help me out there. Um, Anna Clark says um, recently going through a rebrand. Um, our company is now back in the top ranks for our keyword on SEO. Um, we know that people searching for our keyword can see us. Um, yet we still aren't getting the traffic that we want. Most people coming to our site are graduates and young people looking for careers. Um, and although this is good and shows our recruitment campaign is working, uh, barely any of our traffic is actual potential customers. Does anyone know why this might be? Our site title and metadata, etc., is SEO optimized and looks good in Google but people still aren't clicking through to our website. I wonder um, where, whether um, um, the ranking that they're seeing, uh, I'm sure it probably isn't, but I wonder if it might be being influenced by personalized search. Maybe they're not ranking as well as th yeah. they, they think. Yeah, I, I think that's, that would have been my, um, my first question. Um, it's also, um, there seems to be some, um, some presumptions here. Um, is it people not clicking through? That seems to be the case, but there's also um, barely any of our traffic is actual potential customers. Um, so they're not getting very much traffic, and of them, uh, not many are potential customers. How are they judging potential customers? Have they got very um, 
very um, general key phrases? Have they missed out on uh, targeting good, tight, uh, long tail key phrases? Um, what's the content like? Um, they're talking about um, having site title and metadata SEO op optimized. Um, what's what's the the content like on the uh, on on the site? Does um, barely any actual potential customers mean people are coming to the site and not finding what they want? Um, do we have the do we have the URL? No, I was just looking for that. <laughs> yeah, but that's the thing. Look, you know, um, you've obviously got so your your said you said your recruitment campaign's working because you've got you know graduates and all that coming. So you've obviously got a page on your site, um, you know, uh, which is being found in search for these you know for your careers or or whatever the case may be. When you're talking about your main product, as in IE customers, what? Yeah, you know, it would be handy if you came back to us with a URL. Are you? Do you? Are you providing content specifically on what you provide? Um, I, and I don't know what you do, but um, do you have? You know, how is that structured? Do you have? Um, you know, how are your products structured? How, uh, what kind of content are you providing to that? If um, you take, let's say, your one of your main um, saleable keywords that you that you assume it is, uh, wh where do you appear? Do you appear in search results at somewhere along the line? Um, uh, you know, it would be. It's a little bit difficult to try and like thumb suck what the 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 thing is. So if you give us a URL, we could probably have a little look at it um, and kind of give you some ideas. But yeah, it's you know, uh, appearing in the search result is 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 based upon the content you provide. Um, Google can't magically guess what you are providing to someone unless you have words on a page. And then of course. There's a lot more to it, but uh, uh, unless you have something around that subject or product on your site, then you know you will never appear for those words if you don't have those words in, in some way, shape, or form on your site. Um, and obviously, that is the you know really basic. You actually need to provide a lot of relevant content around that. But if you don't have those words, you won't rank for those words. So, what content are you providing in terms of what your customers are looking for? And if you can give us a little bit more detail, we can probably have a look and and give you some, you know, feedback. So, uh, anybody else before I? No. Okay. Well, look, Valentina, um, what Tim is saying is, uh, it w if you wouldn't mind uh, uh, posting uh, again on this one and. Um, Give us a little bit more detail because uh, at least Tim, we would like to look um, uh, a, a little more closely. Okay. All right. Um, next, uh, we have a, a question from Stephen Sicantelli, a good friend uh, from Abraxi Taxi uh, in the um, US of A. Um, Stephen asks, um, what exactly is FeedBurner and will it help SEO? Is it still live? They've been threatening to kill it for years, haven't they? I think there was yeah. Rita. Yeah, FeedBurner is still live. Right, well, basically, FeedBurner allows you to segment. Um, uh, segment other people's RSS. So, for example, if you're cruising on a site, a new site, um, or a uh, let's say the in in your case, the guy down the road uh, who soups up old taxis, and you love his updates about what he's done to taxis. Okay, um, and you want to you want to 
um, instead of going to his site each week to check on new new blogs, uh, if he doesn't have a subscriber and he's got an RSS feed, you can you know what what will happen is that his RSS feeds will update into your feed burner. Um, and other sites that you like and all it does is it collates them for you um, like a magazine on the latest updates so that it's all in one place uh, all your RSS feeds that you've subscribed to all in one place which is easy for you to then keep track of and read um, so from an SEO point of view feed burner per se to yourself won't help you but if you have an RSS feed on your blog um, and other people f come across your site and like it, then they could add your RSS feed to their feed burner um, for regular updates. So, so yeah, I mean, in a, in a, it, per se for you, it's not going to help, but... Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, it's always handy. You know, if you're producing great regular content, um, you know, have an RSS feed, and people might add uh, add you um, to it for regular updates. Cool. Anybody else uh, to add, add for this one for Stephen? I see our good friend Dave Elliott on the uh, community on Google Plus uh, um, said um, it's just an RSS feed maker, it won't help much. You can also add other people's RSS feeds to it to keep up to date with other people's sites and to find shareable articles, uh, um, although something like Feed Demon is better. All right, um, let's look at the next one. Gregory Kristen, uh, can someone tell me what is wrong with this line of code? Um, that's a pity Alistair Lattimore is not here. Did somebody give G Girish Kapoor a, um, uh, a link to the Hangout? Yeah, I, I sent one. Thank you. At least I think um, I did. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, all right, he, he, and he gives the code, um, uh, and it's a, tra a tra track event um, analytics code. I hope Alistair got his um, invitation. Just in case, I'll send another. Nobody help with this um, this code. I see Martin Reed um, answered. He said it should work if you're using. Oh right, there's two sorts of code. Uh, so he said uh, should 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 work if you're using classic analytics, the the one that runs with um, the JavaScript, the GA uh, JavaScript. Um, open up the console in Chrome or Firefox. Right click on the page and select Inspect Element and see if there are any errors when you click on the link. Thank you to Martin Reed. All right. Um, oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry for the delay. Um, all right. Uh, next, um, the next question. Hello, Masataki. The next question is from Sanjay Thakkar, who asks, "Will um, local optimization affect international ranking?" I don't think I did. No, um, optimizing locally is not going to affect um, 
your you know your international ranking the, the, you know but there's a whole lot of factors uh, at play there um, when you say international ranking it also depends you know so your your I don't know are you a dot com or are you a, are you a country TLD um, that that kind of plays a little part there uh, but the point is if you um, are selling um, pink fluffy elephants um, and, and you are based in um, you know London um, of course if someone searches searching for you know pink fluffy elephants in London you will be appearing uh, but if somebody's searching from um, you know France is searching for pink fluffy elephants you do need to do um, a little bit more work in terms of how your site is going to be appearing there. It, one, it's a second; it's a different language, so you should be having uh, language pages for your pink fluffy elephants, uh, and you should be marking those up accordingly. Um, and then you have a very good chance if someone in France searches for pink fluffy um, elephants, uh, then you have uh, you know a, a good chance there. So. Um, and of course, you need to you know expand on these and and and, and build on it content-wise. But um, you know you need to follow the 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 you know the sort of the protocols and the systems if, in order for Google to understand uh, your site, uh, where you are, and what languages, i.e., countries that you actually uh, potentially serve in. Um, and without that, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, what you do in your international rankings will, you know, not, 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 not come into play. So, you, you know, you need to make sure everything's in play for you to actually appear in different countries internationally as well as locally. Cool. Very cool. Anybody else? I see that. Um, uh, no, I didn't, Tim. Uh, <laughs> I see that uh, Rob Mars has joined us um, from uh, uh, Market Biz in the Netherlands. Um, you can find him at uh, marketbiz.nl with two Z's on the end of it. Uh, and Masataki Wasa, webmaster of wasaweb.net and uh, Google top contributor on the uh, AdSense and the Google Plus help community. All right, uh, next um, question is for another one from Sanjay Thakka. Uh, we rank nowhere for the majority of keywords. Our site gets an A for on page optimization and has much more backlinks and content than our competitors, but yet we rank nowhere for the majority of keywords. Okay, so our, your question about sort of, well, your question about obviously local optimization affect international, well, based on this question, uh, neither is quite relevant at the minute. Um, right, so one thing that really con concerns me, and obviously you haven't provided a site there, uh, but one thing concerns me is when you say we have a lot more backlinks than our competitors, okay, and that you're not ranking anywhere as such. Um, that concerns me because what type of links are they? Um, <laughs> if you had more natural, authoritative links than your competitors, um, you say you have on-page uh, optimization all sorted, then you should be, in theory, ranking higher than your competitors for a specific, you know, specific search terms. This, just by what you've said, tells me that your backlinks are not authoritative and or, I'm not going to go there, but and or potentially unnatural. So that's something you need to look at and you need to uh, correct. Uh, you can always have a look at um, uh, Google guidelines on links 
Uh, if you just Google it, you'll come up with their guidelines and um, you'll see what they consider as unnatural links. Um, so by you saying that, that's my first kind of thing. Anybody else? Okay, um, our next question is question number 10 on your run list uh, from Yuma Pathy Seeker. Um, said, hi guys, uh, I have some issues um, with my website. After upgrading to web WordPress from Blogger, my site is not getting indexed. Only the home page of the site is indexed. And the, the site is online. Uh, decoded.com. Any suggestions? Mm, I'm seeing about 100 results if I do a, a site query, so it seems to be getting indexed okay. Um, just put the cache. And they seem to have been crawled quite recently as well. Um, so, you know, I can't see, they seem to be getting indexed okay as far as I can see. Yeah, there's a lot of pages indexed. It seems to be all right. Looking at the the cache of the home page, it hasn't been doesn't seem to have been crawled for about a month. So it might be worth just looking in Webmaster Tools and the as Google to make sure that uh, Google can crawl that okay. But um, as far as the pages being indexed, it seems okay to me. It's a great feature that um, in Google Webmaster Tools that uh, fetches Googlebot, and then you get the option uh, to um, ask Googlebot to also crawl the down-level links, down-level links from that uh, URL. Any more for you, Pathy Seeker? Okay. Question from uh, uh, a good friend, uh, Ian McLeod. Um, Ian is using SEMrush and Webmaster Tools to, to fine tune his sites. Uh, Ian says, uh, hi all, another dumb SEO question for the community. I'm using SEMrush and uh, Webmaster Tools to fine-tune our sites and SEMrush is telling me that uh, we have 403 pages that are missing the correct language declaration. If you don't declare, this is a quote from SEMrush, uh, if you don't declare the language of a web page's content, the web text might not be recognized by search engines. Also, it may not appear in search results or be displayed uh, incorrectly, which can make your website less accessible to people with disabilities. Ian goes on to say, I'm a little confused between a, sim a simple um, meta language tag and the href lang language tag, which is used when you have the same or similar pages in a different language. Our sites are only in English and directed to an Australian market. Do I still need to specify that we are Australian or is that not obvious from the .com.au domain? If so, is it necessary to uh, express this as Australian English? Because our English is a little different to uh, US English and better than British English. No, he didn't say that? Oh. <laughs> I 
I thought he said that. <laughs> no, as Aussies can read, but thank you anyway, David Rosem. Surely someone has an answer for Ian. Yeah, I mean, I think... Um You know, to, it, just to put it into your HT access, um, uh, what your default language is, and that's it. You know, job done. Yeah. Yeah, that, that puts puts it on every page, um, saves you putting it on uh, one page at a time. If he's <laughs> using, uh, just, you know, one thing also to obviously... Um, if he's, you know, using WordPress, he also needs to change his language in that because if he's using uh, WordPress and he's got Yoast installed, then it's also going to be saying that his articles are more than likely a US. So he needs to just um, change that also in WordPress so that everything aligns. But he may or may not be using WordPress. I think he is. Um, I think I think they are WordPress sites. Looking at the um, answers uh, from our forum heroes on the SEO questions community on uh, Google Plus, um, um, we had one answer from um, Promos SEO, SEO. I would suggest that you use language tag n dash au and uh, Content in dash au on each of the pages of the site. Href link can be used in case of gtld domains, um, but .com .au is a cctld, and so href link is not required here. Greg Barker uh, said you should declare the language in the first line of code um, like this, which was HTML space lang equals uh, en dash au, and Mac. Um, page speed said the same as you. Uh, you could be brothers, Tim. Um, he said um, you could also declare it on HD Access if you have one, so you would not need to declare it on every page. And um, oh, the, the last one was a, a, a um, an answer. Uh, sorry, a, a thank you from uh, uh, Ian McLeod. All right. Um, Anybody um, else on the, on the Ian's question? Okay, moving on to the next. George Katsudis um, said, "Hello, kind community." He obviously, doesn't know Tim Kappa. Um, <laughs> he said. Please be nice as I'm a newbie here and so apologies in, in advance for the dumb question. My question is, what would be the effect on a person's SEO, SEO website ranking um, if they had set up 500 non-identical sites with different URLs about the same topic um, with the header in each site being the same image and the menu options pointing back to the original site. I tell you, we're, we're waiting on Tim Kappa to join us. So I wish he was here now. Oh, sorry, not Tim Kappa. Um, <laughs> Sash Meyer. That's all right. I'm going mad. <laughs> okay, so um, just before you start, George Katsuda said, uh, um, question one, would they get banned eventually? Uh, question two, I know this is a grey area. What are the community's thoughts on this concept? And three, has anyone ever done it? Now you can fire away, Tim. Right, George. Yes, uh, thousands people of people do it 
thousands do it every day and thousands will probably continue to do it and thousands will thousands will continue to crash and burn look um, the, the the point the point here is okay um, if you set up 500 non-identical sites all different URLs uh, about the same topic um, but they were not interconnected at all um, you know at all so when I say not interconnected your who is isn't the same um, you know it's it's all different um, probably different IPs um, and, and not linking interlinking in any way shape or form these 500 odd pretty much from what you've explained just a single uh, single page sites wouldn't even rank for that particular topic you know those 500 you know um, sites may sit you know way back because they're, they're, there's no content on them or anything now the minute you interconnect them Google you know can quite easily work out um, the, what you are doing. Um, if it was a genuine business uh, that had five or six companies uh, under different brands within it um, and they and they connected each other from their About Us corporate page, uh, there is no problem with this because you know there's a legitimate company and underneath that company the um, you know there are different umbrellas and brands uh, and it happens all the time but it's done in a proper way Google can understand it you've got 500 crappy little sites all linking back to one original site it's easy to spot you know in, in an instant um, and it's just not going to go anywhere and the original site that you're all pointing back to, that will just be totally annihilated. Uh, so, look, it's just not going to happen. The amount of time and effort it takes you to create 500 sites, uh, let alone the cost involved of 500 URLs, you might as well just put that time and money into the original site and actually make that one site work for you. Yes, um, imagine maintaining um, 500 sites, uh, Tim. I can't even maintain one. Okay. Well, Satsmaya can't be far away now. It's like waiting for Santa, isn't it? All right, um, some good answers on the um, uh, SEO questions community on Google+. Plus. Um, we had uh, one from uh, Promos uh, SEO who totally agreed with Tim Kappa. Um, also, Rotimi Oromaloi um, said the same. Um, and Gregory Christan said, Pitch Black SEO. Um, George came out and said, um, you know, that uh, he was looking at a financial company with um, 25 credit card uh, products and they create four landing pages uh, for each product for Christmas promotions and target markets, all on uh, unique um, domain names. Um, but I think, um, and I, I wonder what you guys have to say, there's a difference between a, a, a large financial company who, who has a, a genuine reason for uh, you know quarantining content uh, which is going to go stale rapidly uh, from their um, main domain, um, or they might even have a need for you know a landing page for PPC or um, a landing page for affiliates. Um, they have a reason for that, and, and I'm sure uh, Googlebot would be able to work out the difference between one and two. Um, any thoughts on that, guys? 
Yeah, sure. If there is a marketing reason to do so and to, to make different landing pages, you should be allowed to use them. Uh, the only problem is that uh, most of the 500 uh, website or uh, landing page websites only use it for ranking purposes and that's the part where it's going wrong. If you are able to, to produce quality, high quality, unique websites, then there is no problem with that. It gets a problem when the, it gets mass production and, and low quality uh, websites. But on the other end, uh, you do see people who do so back in the SERPs, and that makes other people think it will work for them too. And it will, yeah. probably, for some time. Yes, okay. Anybody else? All right, so um, the um, next uh, question that we have um, is another one from uh, Gregory Christan. Um, does anyone know of any good free keyword ranking tools? Uh, he said, I am using QtRank, which is fine, but I will need to pay to export the data to Excel. Thanks. Google Webmaster Tools. Does that much have a free version? Tim? No, not that I know of. Um, I think the most comprehensive one that is free is going to be your Webmaster Tools. Uh, it will give you anything and everything that is relevant to your site. Um, open, uh, open, open, uh, no, I, I, I don't. There's some tools in um, AdWords, aren't there? Yeah, but they are more unreliable than Webmaster Tools. Uh, they are just giving trends, not not statistics. And Webmaster Tools is is getting better and better uh, if you have enough data. So I, I've been comparing them for two years now with, with some of the rank trackers and I think uh, Webmaster Tools is giving you the, the best insight. Uh, what you miss with Webmaster Tools is the keywords you want to rank for and are not ranking for yet. Uh, but they don't have rank, they, they have a, a, a made-up rank if you search for them in a rank tracker. Nobody searches for that word and because you search for it through your rank tracker, it, it, it will be found, but it doesn't help you anywhere because nobody is searching for it, nobody else but you. Yeah. Understand. With with the disclosure that um, Semrush gives um, all of the panelists, um, well, almost all of the panelists. Um, sorry, David. Um, uh, almost all of the panelists on uh, um, SEO questions uh, a guru copy of um, a Semrush to, to use um, in their answering questions on this site. Um, with that disclosure, I've got to say that the, the rank tracking um, in SEMrush is, is really good. Um, I, I run that um, on all of our sites and I get a report uh, sent out um, from it. 
Um, it makes it it, make, it makes it um, look like that I'm busy to my clients. <laughs> um, but no, it, it is it is good. Uh, it it um, confession, uh, Jim. Pardon? That's a great public uh, confession there. <laughs> ah well, ah well. Okay, um, but uh, yeah, it is a top tool. It's it. it I, I'm sure we must find out. But I think Semrush um, has, certainly has a free trial, don't they? Um, a month trial or something like that. Yeah, look, uh, I'd get into that. Uh, have a look at that. Uh, there, there is. There, a, there is a, if he's just got one site, the basic, the basic one. Um, it's very cheap. Um, It is, if you give me one second, I'll tell you exactly what it is. Uh, um. Oh, I thought there was a, a, a smaller one. Um, they're, they're pro, uh, but you know, if you contact them, they might, it is $80 a month, basically round that off. That gives you 500 keywords. Um, and of course, you can use you know track 500 keywords tracking, but you can use obviously all the other features within within <laughs> Semrush. Cool. So yeah, actually, the actually, there's there's sorry, um, I was reading that wrong. Uh, a one month. Actually, you can get it for seventy dollars. Um, yeah. So yeah. That's it. Me done. Sorry. The other thing I I, I would say is the mix is um, if you're looking for some really quick, easy um, key phrase research. In other words, you want some some more key phrases to, to rank for. Um, there's something called Hittail. Uh, H i double t a i l dot com. Um, they do a um, they do a, a free start, then they charge nine dollars ninety five a month. And basically, what they do is they um, they look at your webmaster tools um, uh, searches, the, those that are delivering traffic, um, and jigger about with it a bit and suggest ones that you you should write some content about. Um, it seems to work. Pretty well in a in, in a blogging context. Um, I've tried it out and uh, it's um, it's quite nice. Um, uh, I I can do what it does manually uh, by taking that data out of uh, um, uh, of Webmaster Tools and jigging around with it in in my own inimitable inimitable. I wish I hadn't started that uh, fashion, um, but. This just basically gives you a list every few days, and you can say, "Oh, right, that's a five-star one. I'm going to do that." Bosh. Um, yeah, very, very easy. Does you know? Does some stuff for you in the background and tells you what to do. End of promo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, moving on to the next. Oh, sorry. What was the name of that uh, product, um, uh, David? It was Hit Tail, was it? H i double t a i l. Is that right? Yeah, Hit Tail. Okay. Oh, sorry, I was muted. Um, yes, Hit Tail. Uh, two T's. No problem. Okay, next from At It Dave. Um, a sudden data loss of links and clicks in Webmaster Tools. I meant to have um, a better look at this before the uh, Hangout, but um, time got away from me. But um, I, th I thought this was a really uh, interesting, um, interesting situation that Dave is in, At It Dave is in. Um, he said, uh, a sudden data loss of links uh, in Webmaster Tools and also uh, search links um, decreased to zero. Uh, he says, hi guys, uh, please help me to solve this Webmaster Tools issue. 
and downfall of my clicks and impressions. Um, the, the issue is I have one managed, one self-storage site since for, for a year, but recently, uh, in the last few weeks, um, what I have noticed is that there has been a, a constant reduction in clicks, which eventually reached zero and has have stayed at zero, although impressions uh, also started to decrease from the same time period and they too um, reached zero. I have tested um, analytics traffic which is increasing gradually. Um, keywords ranking in Google Australia is also uh, increasing, gradu increasing gradually. And before October the 2014, um, the total links um, were 200 plus. And in mid-October, it started to decrease gradually, and now it is showing no data available. That's the links, guys. Um, for um, 301 redirection is perfect. Google fetching is also OK. The enhancements um, that we carried out were the site was moved to a new server in October 2014. Um, we switched our pages, uh, our site pages, from HTTP to HTTPS, also in October 2014. Kindly uh, replied to my above query so that I can get back my total links, correct impressions and clicks um, as were previously in uh, Webmaster Tools. So, as Masataki's mentioned in the chat, um, one thing that um, is possible is that he's looking at the HTTP version of the site in Webmaster Tools. Um, Google sees the HTTP and HTTPS as two separate websites, so if you're looking at the HTTP version, then it would make sense if that, that data is decreasing if, if you're looking at the HTTP, because it's now going to the HTTPS. So make sure you've added the HTTPS version of the site to Webmaster Tools. That's a, a good one, and good one, Mr. Taki. Uh, is this the site we were looking at before we went live, Jim? Yes, it was, yeah. Okay. yeah it was um, hillsselfstorage.com.au, I think. Yeah. Um. From what he says in his question, it sounds like he went about moving to HTTPS the right way. So um, the fact I think the looking at the wrong version of the site in Webmaster Tools is all that occurs to me, really. Yeah, let's hope that that, that is what it is. Um, check that out, uh, added Dave. And uh, in other words, um, you may not have uh, the HTTPS version. Um, if you don't already have a HTTPS version in Google Webmaster Tools, you should create one um, and um, then check the stats on that and see how you go. All right, so let's move on to the next. This is a question from a gentleman by the name of Articles for Small Business. Um, in Google Webmaster Tools, under Structured Data, I get errors. He goes on to say, I wonder if anyone can help me with this. In um, Google Webmaster Tools, uh, I, I get er the errors below. I was not educated in web development and know almost nothing about HTML. And the errors are uh, missing author, missing entry title, and uh, missing updated. I have posted in the Google forums and on the SEO questions community on Google Plus, you'll find a link to those um, that to that forum thread. Um, he said, uh, but I, I got the sites where I already looked at uh, um, who had fixed <coughs> which did not work. I have looked at um, WordPress forums, but it is much the same thing. They all seem to say it is a theme error and I should go to the theme editor 
and enter a particular code to a, to a specific place. The problem there is that the specific place does not exist in my theme editor. If it does, um, it is not the exact menu item um, or HTML code. I've even tried um, uh, several times, including the WordPress default 2014, no dice. By watching videos, uh, I thought the problem might be that uh, the uh, Google computers are simply not sure who the author, entry title, or when it is updated. So I tried Google Webmaster Tools Data Highlighter. Someone from the Google forum told me that it must touch the HTML or, or it won't work. Um, sure enough, it didn't. OK. Um, and he said, I, I tried a similar tool from Google Webmaster Tools, the Structured Data Markup Helper. It took a while, while for me to figure out, but I believe I was successful in at least figuring out how that tool worked. Google put a line item under the errors menu item, um, but no, the errors are still there. In effect, Google says I don't know these things in one menu item, and yes, they are here in another. Some people from the forum say that structured data doesn't affect my rankings, um, but I don't know if I believe that. Um, there are things I do and wonder if Google search engines might frown upon, and probably does, but they never tell me about errors. Um, this they do. should point out that the um, um, data highlighter doesn't act on your site. It, 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 it merely is, is a, um, a conduit through uh, Webmaster Tools to help Googlebot um, pick up uh, the um, event data or, or uh, you know, specific data from your site, and, and it certainly um, will help with that. But uh, it, it doesn't touch the code uh, um, on your own site, um, and so it's only useful to Googlebot and, and invisible to uh, other search engines um, like Bing and uh, Yandex and Baidu. Yeah, the, the um, <clears throat> OK, having said that it looks like one for, for TML, uh, I'll talk. Um, just, I, I've, I've been playing about this in, in WordPress on and off, playing about. I've been implementing uh, this on WordPress quite a bit over the past few months. Um, first off, um, take the view that don't worry about it. Um, it's probably not... Um, affecting you too much. Um, it depends really what you want to do. I found that it does help. It seems to help in a in a context of local SEO um, and Google My Business pages. Um, if it's product oriented, uh, Schema.org seems to work best on a on a site that has one product per page. Um, and that's when you haven't got one product per page, then use the um, the Webmaster Tools uh, scraping um, doodle that we talked about earlier, whatever it's called. Um, and I've got that working quite nicely for a client. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, in terms of actually making this work, there are there are numerous tools in terms of plugins available for WordPress. And to be honest, all of them have cause problems when I've uh, when I've used them um, it's the, the problem here is nothing to do with the, the themes to go back to the original question I don't think um, all you need to do is you need to look at what you want to do with uh, with, with uh, schema.org look, look on schema.org or the many many uh, tools that that are out there to allow you to, to set up schema.org very easily. Um, and then put in a, um, a, um, a plugin called header and footer. Um, basically, that allows you to, to bung the, um, actually, I'm a, uh, I'm a coder, bung, um, <laughs> the, the code, the squiggly bits, 
into um, into your WordPress site um, because you, you seem to have been having that pro problem um, judging from your question where does it go well um, it go it can go in your header and footer um, uh, plugin so um, first first thing don't worry too much about the the structured data error but if you do want to do it or you've got a really good reason for, for using um, structured data um, local SEO products services stuff like that um, then um, find uh, a website just google it I can't can't find one off hand or I can't think of one off hand but uh, there's one I've got bookmarked somewhere that just basically you, you stick the factors into it press a button and it says here's the um, here's the uh, schema.org stick it into um, um, into head and footer in your way done now I shall um, step aside and let someone who really knows what they're talking about code wise to uh, tell me I've just told rubbish oh you know what you're talking about David Razem don't you don't you be shy on us <laughs> Yes, I, 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 yeah, this is something I've done. <laughs> Michael Fisher-Kirstner has just joined us. Um, he's Senior SEO Manager for Zazzle in the US of A. Um, all right, and I, look, I'll tell you, somebody who's just joined, or, well, no, not joined, but uh, was initially uh, on um, a, a member of our SEO questions community on Google+. Plus. Uh, Back in, in our very early days, uh, um, and he's, he made the first um, comment on um, this particular question for articles for small business. Uh, it's Scott Harris. Uh, he's a former top contributor, and um, um, I'm very, very glad to see him back um, on our community and, and, and assisting people uh, um, with answers because he does know his stuff. Um, I think he's the only bloke um, older than me. All right, um, uh, Mike, did, did you want to um, uh, answer this one, or we move on? Okay. Anybody else? Um, question sixteen. Um, what the? Oh, hang on. It looks like we have covered. Oh, of course. Okay. Now, now I've got it. Um, the, we now have finished our questions for yet another week. We've covered all of the questions asked on the SEO questions community on Google Plus, um, and now we move to our very popular and second episode of SEO tools. Um, in which we discuss items of interest posted. Uh, on the SEO tools uh, community on Google Plus. Um, if you search for SEO tools, you'll find this community number one. Okay, uh, um, this one was um, a, a post made by John Mueller. It was a, a post originally uh, shared by Patrick Sexton, and uh, it, it was um, well liked. Um, I think Tim Capper said. Uh, Put a post on Google Plus saying I'm loving this feed the bot, um, or something like that. Um, or you know, I'm not sure exactly what Tim says uh, a lot of the time, but uh, anyway, apparently he liked this one. Um, I think it's the first thing he, he liked that wasn't wearing a skirt. Anyway. Um, the, the comment on, on, on this tool, and I, I recommend that you do go and have a look at it. Uh, the URL is www.feedthebot.com slash tools. Um, and uh, they have a, um, a number of options there. And um, the, the output looks pretty well spot on. And um, uh, it's free. Anyway, comments on this one, guys? Yeah, for someone just wanting to get an idea on their site without having to, you know, subscribe to any tools um, to get an idea on the basic health of their site, 
it's a great tool. It's it's clean. It you know breaks it down nicely for them to look at, um, uh, and gives them idea on the general well-being of their site, or you know in 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 a nice, easy to view way. So yeah, you know it's 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 a great tool. Anybody else? Surely we must have more. This is, as Tim said, a really great tool. Um, surely we must have um, another comment. Yeah, I mean it's it's nice for uh, kind of just what Tim said. It's a, it's a good starting point to take a look through a few of the pages of your site and uh, get some information on it. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. User. Great that it's, uh, like it assembles all the information in one place as well to save you going around to all different uh, a number of different tools to uh, like you know Google Webmaster Tools etc and puts it all in one one place here so I really like that I haven't had a chance to use it much but uh, I have a feeling I'll be using it a lot. Excellent. I see we've just been joined uh, by Stash Meyer. Sash is a gun for hire. <laughs> Good and take, Sash. Um, Sash is, a, as I said, a, a gun for hire. He, uh, uh, you'll often see him on Google Plus, um, uh, racking up the miles, driving uh, an American muscle car downhill or something like that. <laughs> uh, he, he, he runs. I'm, I'm not sure if he runs from town to town. Uh, um, or um, how, how, how do you manage to take all these trips, Seth? Uh, it's mainly because I do a lot of work actually in clients' offices and uh, basically rustling, rustling developers, um, do a lot of training. So I tend to get about a bit just as, as part of work. You certainly do. Sess is also um, the oldest um, uh, top contributor in history, I think, aren't you, mate? Um, I'm one of the early ones, yeah. There's, hang on, there's three of us left now out of the original 14. Was uh, Lyndon now one of that 14? Uh, no, Lyndon, Lyndon came in with the second batch. Okay. He's still sorely okay. missed, despite it being a year and a half since he's been gone. Actually, you know. Yeah, I invite him to every one of these hangouts. You know. Yeah, that's it. I can believe it. You know. So, what are we talking about? Well, we've we've answered all the questions, Sesh. Um, oh well, there you go. Um, but um, we have two segments left, uh, and that is uh, um, the, the, this segment is uh, SEO tools, in which we um, discuss uh, new and interesting things that happen in, in uh, tools. Yeah. We post uh, them on the SEO tools community on Google Plus. Um, we've just finished, or, or just in the middle of discussing uh, um, a, a tool that's on www.feedthebot.com. Um, and uh, then um, uh, after that we have our SEO News Roundup in which we post items of interest on the SEO News right. community and uh, we discuss them. So you, you've come to the easy bit. <laughs> it happens. Now I've, I've literally, I've, I've just gotten to my, my winter quarters in, in Cyprus and uh, I've, I've only just kind of moved in so I was still setting up literally until five minutes before I could click the join button. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Um, have we covered feedthebot.com? I'm going to record that as a yes. And the next one um, was no. That, that must have covered all, all of the. Um, this surely can't be an SEO tool. No, I saw um, Richard Hearn posting about this as well a couple of days ago. Yeah, this is a, a, a yeah. I'm sure we're we we're into the news items. I thought we had two um, SEO tool items, so but anyway, 
Um, this is a, um, a, a, an article by uh, Mike Blumenthal originally shared this uh, um, and he posted a screenshot where 100% um, um, of the items above the fold um, were monetized. Um, and um, which is odd because um, uh, part of the Google, Google algorithm is uh, um, does penalize you with, with if you have too many ads above the fold or supposedly, I don't know. Comments, um, one and all? Well, Google's own search results don't necessarily come into... Yeah, their own search results. So it's not exactly uh, a fair comparison with the ads above the fold. But that said, um, you know, it, it's a result... Um, it's bound to happen with a few results where I'd say they're at you know 100% ads about the fold. Um, if they keep expanding that, that's, I do think that's going to be awesome. Some, somebody's getting a, a call on the phone, I think. <laughs> but yeah, no, um, yeah, I think I think getting that. Uh, a full kind of 100% above the fold, that, that's, you know, here or there is fine. Um, you know, I think you know, you're bound to stumble across something like that. But uh, if that, you know, bit by bit they start to try to take over more and more of that, that's going to be problematic, I think, in the long run for their businesses. People will start to, no people will start to notice something like that, and that can create larger issues if uh, people just automatically click the page two or jump, jump to the bottom. Um, versus kind of trying to mix it up uh, in the long run. I have to say, I mean, I, I haven't personally encountered anything like this before, um, but like like you just said, I mean, it's it's something that, that is bound to happen with a few results um, as, the, as the amount of monetization does increase. Yeah. Okay, anybody else on this one? And thank you, Micah. I, 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 um, I see now that the um, that other S, uh, SEO tools item that I was expecting to see uh, was actually at the end of our list. Thank you for that, mate. Okay, our next uh, is um, an, an item. Google is starting to tell mobile searches which results are mobile friendly. Uh, Edwin Yonk uh, posted this and said that is nice. Uh, he said, uh, however, don't rely on auto things too much in my opinion. Um, this was a blog post on Google Webmasters uh, and they said it's a frustrating experience to come across a site that doesn't work well on a mobile device. So we're starting to tell mobile searches which results are mobile friendly. For those who have sites that aren't yet mobile friendly, we're here to help with new tools and documentation. Um, the mobile friendly test lets you see if a particular page is mobile friendly. Um, it gives a link which you'll find on the uh, SEO questions community on Google+. Um, the mobile usability report uh, um, highlights highlights mobile issues that we found across a site. And I said Google, uh, I, I said uh, SEO questions community on Google Plus. I should have said SEO news uh, community on Google Plus. A developer site has brand new documentation on how to create a mobile friendly site, including how to guides for common platforms. Again, the link. And learn more about today's Webmaster News on our blog. And um, so, yeah, that's it. Any comments? Look, if nobody else is speaking, I'll take it. <clears throat> Basically, I mean, I don't know how Ali's looking for everybody else, but 
certainly on my own sites and my client sites, there is an incre increasing, I mean, a rapidly increasing number of mobile users. Particularly, I found that the number of tablets um, access has has gone up significantly in the last year or so. So basically, the, the more Google does, I mean, now now that the the desktop and mobile results are effectively diverging. The, the more Google does to actually make your life easy and, and to tell you whether your site is conforming, you know, the better it is. Time, time used to be when you just used to have a handful of things to test your stuff in. You know, you've got three, four different browsers, handful of resolutions, it's all good. That doesn't work anymore. If you want compliance testing with everything, You've got a you've got a stack of devices on your desk next to you, so <laughs> it's getting a bit impractical. So any any tools um, that come from their end to go, yay, this works, or nay, it doesn't. Uh, to me, and I would personally expect a hell of a lot more um, to appear along these lines in the next twelve months. I was. Um Listening to um, an article tonight um, uh, about um, how Generation Y um, aren't buying cars at the same rate as um, the baby boomers, um, and in fact, um, cars owned by those aged 20 to 30 um, are 12% down in 10 years, and yet the population. Uh, has increased, um, and I think I know the answer. It's because Generation Y have to save up to pay their frigging mobile phone bills. Um. Or it could be that you like <laughs> six. Or it could be that you charge six quid for a bottle of beer, mate, and it's not even a pint, which we worked out the other day. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I agree with Sash. I mean, especially on, um, you know, uh, a lot of my clients, uh, especially in hotels situation, uh, <coughs> tablet has been, uh, tablet was the first one really on the scene in terms of increased um, searching. Mobile is catching up. Uh, tablet still leads the way in terms of actually um, purchases and mobile um, very few still mobile purchases um, in terms of uh, room bookings, but but yeah, I mean it's it's uh, the the pace at which uh, tablets and, and and mobiles are you know searches are increasing is just phenomenal. Yep. Okay. Any anybody else on this one? Wow, this is a uh, really talkative as er, uh, ever. Sorry, Sash, I cut you off there. Go ahead. I said I see Archie is as talkative as ever. <laughs> uh, Archie, Archie has answered his quota of questions tonight. He's covered a few. Um, okay, um, this one. Uh, It's titled Google says it will boost rankings for HTTPS sites, but I think they've moderated that um, since then, I think. Um, and Edwin Yogg, as always, has put his own comment in, maybe switching to HTTPS isn't a good move with regard to SEO. This was a post um, shared by uh, William Rock, um, the inimitable William Rock um, on... Um, a conversation with John Henshaw of Raven Tools uh, it was published on uh, Search Engine Land. Um, but in, in an interview with um, um, contributor Clark Buckner, um, Henshaw recommends that SEOs hold off. Comments, guys? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> it's not an easy... The switch to kind of an HTTPS is not necessarily a, a, an easy system to do. So 
whether um, there's been a perceived value from doing a lift. One, it's been, you know, for, for those that have claimed it, it has been small um, and probably not worth it comparative to the stress and the um, implementation that you're going to need to make that switch. Um, so that's that's generally kind of most of the reasons. And then there's been recently lots of lots of counterpoints of there's no benefit as of yet. So yeah, I think I mean personally from from when it all came out, I, I still have the same feeling. I, I do think. Google probably pushed it out in the wrong way, you know, rather than just saying, you know, we'd really like you to uh, <laughs> to to switch across to H, you know, double TPS, rather than saying, if you switch, we will give you an, an increase. Uh, or, in, well, no, they didn't say that. They said it's uh, a slight increase in ranking factor. Um, probably not, shouldn't have gone down that 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 sort of uh, wording, but what I've always said is a any any site that is e-commerce that you know should should buy and for still you know obviously should have HTTPS in their checkout section. It makes sense for them to just roll roll the rest of the sites across. They've already got half of it done. Well, you know, it makes sense to do the rest. Uh, for a static site that doesn't transmit or require any user interaction in terms of exchange of information, you know, uh, at the minute, I personally would say look, I don't think it's a must do today. Um, it, it will, I sup I'm, I'm assuming, over time uh, increase, and you 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 would you would potentially need to but uh, most certainly for uh, e-commerce sites they should put that down as something to look at if half your sites already in you know um, insecure then you might as well look at rolling out the next time you plan a redesign or an update to your site in the next year or so you know no, I have to say I mean I, I wasn't in any in any huge hurry um, Certainly, with with any site that, as you said, doesn't require the client information, the interaction, and whatnot. Um, you know, with with from my end, if there was sensitive information, um, I, I basically browbeat my clients into going secure to start with. So when Google turned around and made this a ranking factor, um, you know, we. Everybody kind of got excited. It's like, oh, you'll get really big bonuses for for going secure, and it's like it's one of about four hundred odd factors. I mean, it's it's tiny, it's minute, you know. Um, courses for courses, and and uh, yeah, as as Tim just said, I mean, it's as time goes on, I have a feeling it's going to go all secure. But for the moment, I'm I'm not running. To, to go secure on my own information sites that are just sitting there serving serving knowledge, you know? The problem I have with it is, you know, a lot of people have been saying it's great that Google is now promoting secure, secure sites. Um, you know, the thing is, HTTPS doesn't mean a site is secure. It just means that you've got a secure connection. And you could have a secure connection to the most easily hackable website in the world. You could have a secure connection to a site set up solely to steal your personal information, you know. So I think there's been a lot of, you know, misinformation out there with everyone talking about secure sites and not distinguishing between secure sites and secure connections. Um, and then the other thing is, to actually get a certificate, in most cases, you're going to need a dedicated IP address. And IP addresses, IPv4 addresses, ran out about three years ago now. So the ones that the um, regional registries have now are all that's left. And you know Google forgot to mention that um, in their initial announcement. And so most other people have forgotten to mention it as well. But um, you know, I think bearing in mind that it's with that in mind, it's technically impossible for everybody to move to HTTPS. I mean, there are a few ways you can reduce uh, the IP addresses you need, but um, you know, even so, it's they won't work for everybody. So I think a lot of the technical details haven't been considered. 
because this um, may hasten the implementation of uh, IPv6, um, 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 which is more or less stalled, um, but it, 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 it offers uh, an unlimited um, number of um, um, IP addresses. Um, so that, that may happen. I, 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 one article I was reading this week um, was on um, the way in, in which the certificates work and, and one, one um, popular hashing method was, is what they, what, I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, but it's SHA1, so I'll, I'll just say SHA1. Um, and that, that, that's been around for years and years and um, um, but it's, it's um, no longer um, the, the best, uh, res best outcome. So um, what we're moving towards is um, moving from SHA-1 to SHA-256. SHA and um, I, th I think I've got this right, but um, Microsoft said that they wouldn't accept SHA-1 certificates after in, in, I in IE um, after uh, 2016. And keep in mind that it's very, very nearly 2015. Uh, this is the 14th month. Um, but um, so, you know, Microsoft um, was going to bar uh, SHA-1 in uh, 2000 and, or after 2016. And then Google came in just recently or no, just after that and said that they won't accept SHA-1 during 2016 and of course after as well. So that's put it back a year. So in other words, in 12 months time, mo and, and not many people are on SHA-256. So what that means is that, is that in 12 months time, uh, almost every um, web server with SSL um, won't be acceptable by Google, it won't be accepted in Chrome. Seems strange to me. I, I I don't think the world's ready for the for, for such a rapid change. Um, certainly uh, on our on our servers, uh, and we're supposed to um, um, maintain PIX compliance. Which we, I mean, we no no. Let me put that another way. We work day and night to maintain PIX compliance, and uh, it, it's at the forefront of our minds. But you know things like SSL two v two and SSL v three, they um, creep up on you. You know you put them in servers years ago and uh, they're they're still running, and all of a sudden uh, you find that um, they're no longer as secure that, as they could be. Um, anyway, that's the end of my ramble. Um, anybody else? No, apparently not. All right. Sorry, I must have sent you all to sleep. Okay. Um, this is uh, another one um, from Edwin Yonk, who does a phenomenal job um, in keeping our communities posted with uh, interesting topics um, on the SEO tools community and the SEO news community. Um, Edwin wrote, uh, Google, Google's knowledge graph gets more neutral. Instead of only showing Google Plus results, it now also gives links to competitors. This was an, an article uh, shared by um, our good friend Dave Elliott. Um, Google knowledge graph gets more special. This is more than a little useful. Search for people in other entities and you can see all their social profiles. Well, I've only got one. Well, I searched my name and there's nothing, so <laughs> so I'm not even going to comment. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I was a social profile. I, th I think I think you have to be Generation Y to be have a social profile, don't you, Tim? Aren't aren't, aren't you disqualified? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, yes, go ahead. I heard someone take a breath then. 
No, that was me. I was saying no. I mean, you know, from a if you're if you're lucky to be enough to to actually have your own you know your own appearance in a um, knowledge graph, it 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 it's nice. You know, it makes sense. Uh, it's telling you who they are, and now you can um, you know connect socially. So it it makes sense. It's a nice it's a nice piece to add in, and um, it just makes sense. Uh, it's about time, I would say. Yeah. It's been how long? Um, and they only finally now start like highlighting other profiles, although really, seriously, MySpace. But uh, <laughs> the um, it's still, even then, it's like, yeah, it, it's it, it's amazing what a little bit of um, pushback. Can do to finally like, to to onto Google to get in some nice, um, more accurate and representative results for uh, information uh, for like where where uh, where you find kind of where you can find people or information um, that kind of that's outside of the Google space. And one thing that they have to be reasonably confident about is that. The profiles they're linking to are legitimate and verified, as it were. So, with well-known people, celebrities, famous people, they probably have verified accounts across different platforms. But if you're not particularly famous, no well-known, then that could be problematic. And I think there are, of course, opportunities for people to uh, manipulate that. Yeah. No, you're not saying that people would manipulate that, would do you? I mean, surely people aren't like. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, gosh, you have very sort of elevated concept of human nature. Oh, I'm an idealist through and through. Anybody who knows me will tell you that. Okay, I'll stop it with the sarcasm now. <laughs> Okay, will we move on from this one, or I'm, re I'm reluctant to move on because we're having so much fun, and I think we've only got about one more click left. Well, I mean, okay, just just before we do, see, there's this kind of double-edged sword, and I can already see um, some people sort of whining about it uh, with the Big Brother aspect. It's like, oh, they're, they're tracking us everywhere. It's like, oh, they're, they're not just restricting themselves to to Google Plus and whatnot. And there's there's invariably there's there's the detractors and, and, and the proponents. And it's you know, where where do you go? And and from what I've seen of, of Google and, and I've seen a lot, um, it tends to be from there in about satisfying the query intent um, by whatever means seem best, you know. And uh, Obviously, that draws quite a bit of criticism, and I've probably just stepped on a hornet's nest, haven't I? <clears throat> yeah. No, oh, nobody's wow. about to speak, are they? I was going to say, was that a conversation stopper? Damn! <laughs> <laughs> no, but that would be an interesting prospect, isn't it? Because if Google is reasonably confident that a profile on a particular social plat uh, social media platform is that of this person, Google may decide to link that, even though the person may not have wished that to happen. Obviously, Google's not oh, going to ask everyone, you know, would you like to have this linked? No, no this is true, but then again, if if you have what is effectively a public profile out there on the open web, you know what what's your objection from from that end? Yeah. I mean, if, if surely if it's private and they find it and they link it, yeah, that's not right. But if it's a public profile, then you know it's it's open season as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I think that's fine. I think you know, if the name matches, for example, then uh, that's fine. But if what if someone has a particular persona online that is detached from his or her 
professional identity or even personal life. And it's out there open in public, and that person may be using a pseudonym. But for whatever reason, Google has decided with reasonable confidence that this profile belongs to that person and link the two. I can, I can kind of see that in the Google space um, where it may accidentally happen, but by the same token um, from, from their own end, I would think that they'll only ever be the, the primary one listed, but if the person in question has got his, his professional profile over here, profile over there, you know, uh, if this one isn't divorced properly, then accidents can happen. And again, to me, it's like if you want, you know, you're drinking and mooning to be disassociated from you, then you'd better make sure that it is, you know, or better still, don't do it in the first place. And as, as Eric Schmidt once said, you know, if it's said on the open web, oh, well, never mind. You ain't going to get it back, or words to that effect. Mm. Yeah, I just <laughs> had this nightmarish situation of photo recognition, facial recognition being used. So you might be mooning, and then a picture's uploaded somewhere on the internet, and then Google will say, oh, that's you. Don't moon. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, let's face it. Still, you still need to have, for for you know, for you need to still be notable in to get that you know recognition in the knowledge knowledge graph in the first place. Um, so you know, you generally are some form of public or in the public eye in that sense. And yeah, I'm just a bit worried about Google Ads for recognition. What did you say? Google ass recognition. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord. <laughs> it's coming. I'm telling you. It's the it's the product after Nest. Don't worry. Okay. All right. Let's let's uh, move on from this. Oh no, I can say one more thing about it. Um, no, I can't. There we go. Next one is um, oh, our good friend Semrush, um, um, and uh, they had a, a Twitter chat on six, or, or the outcome was six SEO myths busted. Um, SEO myths uh, are twice as powerful as Hercules and as slippery as loci. It was time for us to examine these myths more closely and possibly uh, bust some of them. Um, let me see uh, if any of our guys uh, were mentioned. No? Um, no. Well, I mean, <laughs> why weren't we asked, Tim? <laughs> All right. Um, you guys had a look at any of these six uh, SEO myths? Can't uh, have it here. Yeah. The link can be found um, on the um, SEO um, news community on Google+. Plus. Arthur Rodelescu has joined us. Um, he, he, he works for, is it Daniels in New York? I'm probably wrong again. Um, and uh, he is a, a search engine optimization specialist from Bratislav in Romania. Mm. 
not sure how number one is technically... Uh, I wouldn't define that as a myth. Define that as something else, not not men. Um, for those that um, uh, are at home, uh, Micah, what was number one about? Uh, myth number one: we must rank first on SERPs. To me, a myth is something like uh, uh, is is like um, LSI matters in Google search results to to rank. That's a myth. Um, Whereas this kind of we must rank number one on SERPs is yeah it's kind of like it's qualifications of like well yeah for terms that matter and it's kind of important <laughs> uh, if you want yeah. the traffic you know so it's it's a little uh, I know what they mean by it but I don't like I don't particularly like that one. I see Arthur says he's um, your mic uh, must be muted uh, hardware on your side um, Arthur uh, you, oh, no, it's showing it's muted now I'll see if I can unmute it for you but yeah otherwise the others look fine um, in terms of the the myths that they have I haven't finished reading through it I'm just looking at the overall myths Hello. Hello, okay. Arthur. Oh, so now it's okay, right? It is. Okay. Hello, everybody. <laughs> that was a boisterous welcome. It's. Uh, <laughs> I don't Good know. Time. Sorry, it was muted. Nice to see you again, Arthur. <laughs> hey, hey. hey, Sash. Um, Probably hardware problems because I was unmuting myself, but no sound was coming out, so I had to re-plug the mic. Okay. Okay, well, we're talking about, um, uh, and it's uh, on your run list, uh, it would be about, um, about number eight, uh, 21 on your run list. Um, six SEO myths busted. And the first myth was uh, the aspiration to be number one on, on, on Google. Is that what uh, you said, Micah? Sorry, r r what did you just say? I, I said um, that um, um, the, the, the first myth um, was um, to be number one on Google. Yes, that, that right? was the first myth, correct, yeah. that they had listed there. Um, Isn't it amazing how how people um, um, and, and I'm sure you guys get it all the time. <clears throat> they, they, they 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 say you know when when will when can we expect to be number one? You know, and uh, I I had someone send me an email the other day. You know, other people guarantee positions. Why can't you? <laughs> I think it's natural that people want to know when, um, but uh, it's just it's just explaining their expectations. You know, I mean, yeah. I've got I've got a client, um, you know, who wants to rank for Hotel Suffolk, and he's constantly going on about it, and I keep saying, well, look, you know, let's look at the actual traffic here. You know, it's you know Google. Google sort of keywords tools reckons we're only going to get if for number one two thousand visits a month, but let's look at your local traffic that you're getting now from from the localized um, queries that we we're ranking you on, and we're attracting twenty thousand visits a month. So why are you so obsessed with this? You know this this term. What's not going to do anything for us? You know, in terms of a mass amount of traffic, just oh, get don't, over don't go it. Go down the the brand side where it's like, yeah, just brand get over it. Out of interest, what, what's his locality in Suffolk? Uh, I'm just don't want another hotel, but just give me give me kind yeah. of a general area. 
Ips, Ipswich. So he's, okay. uh, he's, yeah, he's. So for all Ipswich, we're fine. For all the actual local, uh, even smaller localized, um, it's all fine. And all of the localized is generating twenty odd thousand visits combined in a month. But they are still obsessed with I want to, be, <laughs> do you know, and hotel he's stuff. Barking up the, then he's barking up the wrong tree because I mean he's he's targeting entirely the wrong catchment. I mean you already know that. You know, but yeah. it's it's there. I found that yeah, customer education tends to be very very hard, and yeah, it's, it is. it's exactly customer education where where I have to put um, quite a lot of my focus, almost invariably, especially with the larger companies. They've got developers, they've got project managers, they've got all sorts of people that have their very own and very defined opinions. And uh, it can be tough at times, you know. I mean, the, the one one of my one of my Canadian clients, um, their in-house SEO recently quit because he couldn't put up with me anymore. Um, and they've they've now replaced they've, they've amalgamated the positions of in-house SEO and in-house social media. And I'm now working with the social media guy who has absolutely no preconceived ideas on the SEO front and just does what I tell him cheerfully. And all of a sudden, the performance is like woohoo, you know, because there's there's no longer that element of friction that that we had before, and it's great when that happens, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's always it's always good when you've got a client who's who, like you say, have you know no preconceived ideas, no also um, uh, you know uh, what sort of vanity. Conceived, you know, search terms that they yeah. that they have these bizarre vanity things about, and uh, and you can just get on, and you you know, and 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 they happy, and things roll smoothly, instead of every couple of months with them coming back and going, but what about this? <laughs> it's like just calm down. And um, and I mean, by and large, customers don't tend to be very efficient at keyword search, you know. Yeah. So it's it's. Yeah, um, the days when I used to go, well, just go and go and pick some, and we'll we'll kind of take it from there. It's like, no, stay stay the hell away. I'll do this, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they, those days are long over, you know. Leave it alone. Don't touch it. It'll explode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, guys, I just have to tell you something. I've got a recent client that came to me, and he told me, hey, can you please help me to improve my purchase through rate? I want to gain more purchases for the same visitors. Whoa, I was amazed. How come you don't want to be number one for any keywords? I was really amazed. First client who knows what he wants. <laughs> it's unbelievable to see that uh, there are clients that are already um, educated. They're, yeah. they're few and far between and, and I think by and large in the industry in general Conversion optimization is, is ignored far far too much. I mean, you know, to actually optimize for revenue rather than traffic, it's just it's overlooked. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. I mean, I've I've got some new guys where one of their uh, their is working working through their site the other day and. They've, I said, right, you know, you've got a wedding, a wedding package page here, um, but is that all you offer? You know, can can you offer different packages? Uh, do you have add-ons? Do you have um, other people you can recommend? Other people you work with? Bear in mind that this is like a tiny island now, um, so you must have suppliers that you know can supply this. Um, so anyway, they they. they Every single one of the pages they put together looked exactly the same. So the 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 the, the wedding package for thirty five thousand and the other package for sixty five thousand were all the same, except the sixty five thousand said add ten more guests. It's like, okay, right, let's get serious. If I'm going to spend sixty five grand, I want to, you know, come on, I want to see what I'm going to get. Are you selling this to the customer, or are you just thinking I need to put words on a page here? You know, you, you, they kind of forget that they actually need to sell that product, <coughs> rather than just you know magically put some words on a page and they'll magically sell it. 
<laughs> you know, it's uh, a lot of people still believe in fairies and pixie dust exist in uh, you know online. It's it's completely bizarre. Yeah, I, I had a client who um, came to me. They they were ranking number one, and number two for a load of uh, what appeared to be um, good key phrases. So uh, I. I looked up how many searches were on these. Basically, about ten maximum for for the best one, um, and they just couldn't get in their brain that um, number number one for something that didn't have any searches uh, was worse than being somewhere on the first page for something that did have a lot of searches. But we actually do this, and they were using their internal terminology for what they did rather than what their customers were using. You know, it's just absolutely classic key phrase research stupidity. Um, and they they were the the nightmare client. Um, you'd move them along three steps in the right direction and then they'd say, uh, no, uh, we don't want to do that. We want to go back to what we were doing first because we ranked number one for that. And uh, you know, it's, it, there comes a time, and, and with me, it, it's, it's actually it's not happening a whole lot these days because I, I, I'm I'm really I'm, I'm at the place where I, I only tend to take one gig in three these days because it's just not worth it. Um, you know, it's it's uh, benefits of being the hot shot SEO, I suppose. But no, um, in in all seriousness, there comes a, there comes a point when you have to fire the client. You know. Yeah. Because because it's really it's it's above and beyond and it, it it's just no longer worth it, you know it's no it's negative gain no matter how much they're paying you yeah, basically absolutely absolutely you know um, and on that note I've got a call in a couple of minutes so I'm going to have to jump out. However, I shall try to actually be on time next week. These look like fun. Catch y'all later. Yeah, cheers. Cheers. Have a good night. Bye. Thanks, Ash. Um, did, did he say he was coming back next week too? Yeah, he said he'll um, try to get his time sorted. Ah, to to repeat. No, yeah, that's I guess cool. it's because he's, he's back in um, back in Cyprus for a break. Um. Okay. All right. Um, well, look. Yeah, let's um, <clears throat> move on from um, that um, second last question because we have one SEO tool that that, that we didn't cover before. Um, I'll just. What's going wrong here? Trying to get the get the button to jump. There we are. Found it. Dave Elliott put this um, on our SEO tools community um, on Google Plus, and it's a list um, compiled and uh, curated by uh, Anne, Anne Cushing. Um, and uh, it's an absolutely great list. Um, it, it's it's a Google Doc, and you can take a copy of it and. Uh, um, as as she updates it, it'll up your your copy will update. Um, absolutely brilliant. Have you guys had a look at this this list? Yeah, I've had it for years. I like it. Mm. Love it. It's a good list. Yeah, good I, it's the first point. time I'm seeing this list. It's quite interesting. I haven't got the chance to walk through all the tabs as it has a lot of tabs. Underneath. I mean, yeah. Okay, yeah, go ahead. No, it's the first time I'm seeing it, so. Um, I'll yeah, I mean, I, I, I like um, I like the comprehensiveness of it, but I don't like I don't like the layout. I I definitely would change the layout, but I um, from a comprehensiveness standpoint, uh, it was it was a pretty good one that Andy put together. Yeah. 
anyway, I thought it was such a great list that, um, and I haven't seen it before, um, but anyway, I thought it was such a great list, I pinned it to the top of the community, <laughs> um, and um, I, I think we might as well uh, leave it there. Um, all right, um, any other items of general business, guys? Okay, um, if you're still watching, thank you very much. Um, we really appreciate your participation and uh, it's the, the very fact that you are interested in what we have to say that makes what we do uh, worthwhile. Um, we'd like to have you join us, uh, if you would. Um, we're going to go off um, offline now, but we will be uh, um, uh, still operating in the green room. I put a link in the SEO questions community in Google Plus, um, the, 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 on the top post in that community, uh, the first comment uh, is a link uh, directly into this hangout, and uh, you're more than welcome to come and have a chat with us. Um, we'll be back at the same time next week um, to do this all again.